All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we are here in episode three or four. We, we might have another surprise up my sleeve, uh, but we are here with uh, the legendary Ivan Santik. He is uh, one of the, for me, one of the most iconic uh, designers in the in the whole industry. Uh, he's from Croatia, if I'm not mistaken, and he yes. is one of the most distinct design styles out there. Uh, so, without further ado, man. Hi, Ivan. How uh, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty good, man. Uh, thank you for inviting me in the third episode. Uh, first is the charm. Oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah and uh, thanks for the really nice introduction as well. Uh, yeah, you, it's yeah, it's it's not enough, man. It's not enough, but it's um, we'll let you work, do the talking and everything. It's 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 crazy, man. Your your style is very. Um, I would say the thing that that attracts me the most is is they almost mm -hmm. seem like real products like actually mm -hmm. well designed taking care of products like even the materials and everything so i'm i would be so happy to just learn like a little snippet of your uh what's going I on i actually here, had man? internship at the real industrial design company at the time i was uh, just starting so that that was my goal at the time but that happened just after the hyper island hyper island is a school uh event uh, after my first university degree, I actually finished history, but that was a long, long time ago because for, for the university, I was already doing design. And, uh, but before I started kind of with design, I was interested in multitude of uh, things and uh, I wasn't really sure what I'm going to take. So, yeah. but then uh, later on, this actually became quite, quite useful because uh, I think f um, Education and culture is a really important um, uh, part of the design itself. It's, it's, not, it's not just making and shaping the form. Like you actually also a problem solver, but to solve some problems, I think you have to understand the, the client, the, the, the needs, the, the background. Yeah. And so you need a little bit wider picture, I would guess. Y uh, yeah, but it's not just about cool shapes and everything. It's but in 3D modeling, so to speak, I'm uh, all rather, let's say, like self-taught, even though I have a design background as well, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Hyper Island itself. But I'm, I still consider in, in some areas like self-taught because it just needs a lot, a lot of extra time. Like, and I don't think no one will uh, teach you if you don't try to teach yourself like um how to do things oh, you yeah. just have to Ab absolutely sit on chair and do the work and simple as that yeah yeah Ed education can only take you that far like it's especially in in every, any creative endeavor i i feel like it's it's, it's, it's a up to the person right yeah yeah i'm, I'm calling education a license to kill so <laughs> yeah, i think that's yeah. the best description you know yeah yeah and uh so you actually went to university uh, yeah, in, in Croatia, yeah. and uh, at the time it was also, I mean, free if you manage to uh, pass uh, the, the the exam, the, the the first one. Like, uh, and then after that, uh, I went for the design in Sweden. I was studying in Karlskrona for for a couple of years, and uh, then I was uh, working living in London for a year almost. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that 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 was crazy. Uh, I mean, even though. Like it, it was nice. Uh, I'm. I wouldn't say like I'm missing uh, that time a lot because uh, living in such a city like it takes a lot of energy, and uh, I'll be probably around parting more than doing design. So it depends, you know. So yeah, I, I heard London's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I think that's a city for young people, so to speak, you know, <laughs> like if you don't have energy and you can't walk like, and uh, if the, yeah, yeah, yeah if yeah. the transportation isn't working properly, like no one is driving uh, uh, a car, everyone is like um, using something else. So yeah. 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 Like, like crazy wheels it's with not two for steps everyone, on it. I and, guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't call myself an expert on, on London. Like living there for a year doesn't make me a person who lived that for a long time. And after all that time, if I visit, I don't think I'll uh, 
uh, recognize uh, the city because everything's changing. I mean, when I was back in Croatia, I was surprised with the changes here as well. And I was only a couple of years away. So, all right, yeah, yeah, but some it's like old, especially old in those G, big cities, stuff changes all the time. It's uh, it's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have a background in like actual product design, if I understand that correctly. Uh, digital media. Ah, digital media. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Digital media, but it's kind of wide. Like no one uh, after that school, no one was doing uh, the same thing everyone went for. Like it, it, it was kind of broad subject. So yeah, a couple of guys were doing um, what I was kind of trying to do, and but my portfolio and everything was kind of based around uh, product design. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you you kind of got to choose your uh your focus in that in that education yeah i mean i wouldn't call my school at the time industrial design school and it's actually it can be a good thing as well uh because all these schools who specialize too much they're also catering too much around the same subject yeah and today like the, you're getting a convergence of, of different things especially i see that now nowadays in uh, automotive design um through through I was also speaker on automotive design conference, which was somehow uh, happened in Croatia. Um, now my friend, like Daniel Tomic, uh, he founded uh, that event outer and every year he was inviting like a uh, lot of design, car designers, actual car designers oh, yeah, uh, yeah. or studio bosses like from all around the world. A lo lot of this, like one example from Pini Farina or any major studio, like they were all coming there. Uh, and it, it was crazy opportunity to talk all these people and got through their experiences uh, as as well. So I had the opportunity to form my own opinion about the whole industry uh, as 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 well. And later on, thanks to that, I also worked on the Rimac. Um, um, we we say here in Croatia Rimac. Um, so it's a Croatian uh, uh, hypercar oh, right. uh, electric uh, car company. All right, and w what was it called again? The Rimac. All oh, right, right. I'll uh, I'll edit those things in so viewers can uh, can actually see like what we're talking. Uh, I'm about. I'm sure you've, you've you've seen that. Like I was working on the concept one um, animation uh, at the time that the car was uh, showed off on the Frankfurt Motor Show. One year is a uh, Frankfurt Motor Show, another is Geneva, if I'm not mistaken. All right, yeah. Yeah. The, by the way, the car the car design industry that's like a whole another secret world, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I I completely agree. Just like entertainment design, like yeah. there, there's also interesting. Like there's a lot of car designers working now in entertainment design. Yeah. And there's yeah. some people from entertainment design kind of working in automotive design field. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I guess uh, like the Daniel most... Simon, I think. Yeah, I was like just th I was just thinking about yeah. Daniel Simon. Yeah, if, if you think about him like that, I think like it's one he, of the best. his book, like Local Motors, uh, was one of the first books I actually bought on the design, which is kind of converging between these two worlds. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not considering myself a petrohead at at all. I, I like the the form of the car, the philosophy. Mm -hmm and uh, the language um, um, they're using yeah. informing these shapes and i also think like we you also have to be a little bit uh, detached from the subject you design because if you're in love if it's something too much you're not going to change it at all because it's uh, already perfect for you yeah yeah that, that's yeah that, that's all the whole kill your babies uh, kind of deal right it's like nothing yeah, yeah 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 and in that regards i will just uh, kind of quote I reference uh, Marcello Gandini which for me is like he's like Kubrick in uh, automotive the design yeah. what Kubrick was for the movie industry yeah and I'm also mentioning him because not so many people know about this uh, Italian designer and um, he he was like um, really uh, I say um, special in a way I, I don't think that automotive industry understood him that well either just like uh, yeah. cubic wasn't understood completely by the movie industry so yeah it was like kind of ahead of his time yeah yeah and it's also easier to make all these claims you know backing up backed up with someone yeah you know that big so yeah <laughs> yeah of course yeah yeah so um, um what what actually made you do 
got into entertainment design? And was it like an organic thing or did you just, uh, was it like, it... Uh, I don't want to specialize at all. It's more based on the clients. Uh, oh, all right. Also, I yeah. Don't have, yeah. I'm also like kind of working for the military, uh, oh, really? defense sector a little bit as well. Like I have, I, I've noticed like Eotech is following me on Instagram as well. I'm really proud on that. And uh, I like I like that brand because uh, they also uh, I think the other day they also shared some some um, uh, short snippet from some game and it's kind of cool to see a corporation sharing um, uh, some of the products from the game itself. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But this is also proving the point like the worlds are now converging as well, especially with NFTs. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So you actually like you don't consider yourself to be a uh... An entertainment designer you you are more like a product designer who i would also... rather say problem solver you're a pro and, yeah uh, yeah yeah there you go. I, would ra- I would rather say that and i think when people start they model design things and they try to make things kind of more beautiful but uh, later on you realize it's more about problem solving and actually pr- um uh, I think the right term will be like a uh, production value, you know, like my job is actually to create something from nothing. Yeah. You know, and that actually design is. In that way, the bad design can be also the most expensive uh, thing ever. You know, like everyone is like talking these days, you know, how much they, they will charge and so on, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard to establish because it's also based on your skills and also on your own self-respect, uh, yeah. I would say, yeah. you know definitely like to to study one of the brands and a dual product like on example if if a company existed in 80s or 90s and it kind of uh, went down and we we still have some one of the great products that they have uh, they did that at some point but now this is like uh, not existing in this uh, time and time frame yeah, uh, I like uh, like I like the idea to, to recreate it, like how what what we, that will be now, but it doesn't mean I'll be uh, making that product uh, looking how it already was. It was like taking the brief from uh, from that time and making that brief work in uh, this age and time. Yeah, like in the current day. Yeah, yeah. So th- there's a lot of on example in. in like cars, which like they're trying to revive on something, but this is not going to uh, to work because that specific car was fulfilling the specific specific purpose at that point in time. But a lot of yeah. things changed, and copy yeah. of that car is not going to fulfill the same f- need nowadays because no, no. Uh, things are completely different. It's uh, interesting that you say you say that. I I don't know if this is true. But I heard that back in the days, uh, a lot of those uh, American muscle cars, uh, that they were basically designed for long stretches of straight road, like those desert roads, like the Route 66 kind mm-hmm. of stuff, and that they're actually terrible to steer with. Uh, for the reason that they're designed basically to do like long stretches of uh, straight road. And I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of like... Yeah, definitely an interesting point. Definitely interesting point. I, I, I mean, I, I cannot confirm that, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of these things people just take as granted and they uh, doesn't mean they're going to change, you know, like um, on, ex- on example, like if you're trying to penetrate some new group or design field, whatever, like you're going mm. to use your plain logic. Yeah. But uh, most of the a lot a lot of time, not most of the time, things are not connected to the logic. They are connected to the already established uh, habits, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, yeah. And as outsider, you are not like the logic can actually uh, lead you on on a wrong path. And um, so every every one example, like when um, director says, make this more realistic. What does it actually mean? Yeah, you what know? does that mean? Yeah, that's it's, a very it's completely vague description, subjective right? On on yeah. what uh, he finds realistic, and yeah. Um, so yeah, like movies, you know, they all have a color code, like uh, Mad Max type of the movie. They all come with this kind of um, uh, uh, color shades. Uh, yeah, uh, specific, it's a Mexican filter, right? 
Ex- exactly. So yeah. this is realistic for this kind of movie, but it, this is not realistic. Like in in life, I have like the f- full color all the time. I don't have filter over it. Uh, yeah. Unless I'm wearing sunglasses or so, something like that. So. Yeah. But for him, that could be a realistic, you know, a realistic for his industry. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I guess it also kind of ties into to the kind of feedback you sometimes receive from uh, from clients who, who kind of don't know the the identity of their own product. I guess, like you say, like it realistic happen, yeah. within that universe, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if 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 if. Uh, uh, clients uh, actually come to you to solve something. Yeah. Not 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 that they're always out of time, so they need someone else to do something. They will do it instead. Sometimes they yeah. they don't really understand. Uh, yeah, they just need someone else. Like uh, hopefully you'll be looked upon as an expert, so to speak. You know, if they're yeah. that, that great yeah. at that, like they'll be doing themselves already you know yeah uh, but i don't mind i don't mind if someone knows uh who he is and uh uh, this can be also a great thing but uh, it's not that often i had on example i had a lot of uh and uh to the point i started doing 3d modeling design industrial design so on i had a a big learning curve as well so i went for the graphic design i was doing web design I was doing a lot of these different things. So um, to be able to comprehend that this makes me um, now uh, this experience. Uh, yeah, this this is maybe why the product uh, I'm doing nowadays like uh, can have all this um, can be rounded from from all sides, so to speak. All right, guys, we're back after uh, my camera dying on me. Uh, should have just bought the right dummy battery, you know. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, we were talking. Uh, I actually forgot where we were, so uh, I don't know if you can uh, can fill me in. Uh, I think it was a shot. Yeah, design. all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about the uh, that legendary design. At least that's on the on the screen. Yeah. So, yeah. In terms in terms of uh, branding, uh, it's also interesting. Like I have kind of adopted the, the the way I'm kind of naming my projects. I'm not always going for this kind of uh, sound uh, looking names like Maverick, uh, uh, I don't know, Fighter or whatever. I'm tr- I'm trying to to kind of use a code name rather than um, than something else because this also evokes the uh, the yeah. industrial process uh, a little bit more. So and I've seen a lot of people actually adopting that uh, method. And after, after are there like specific designs you're talking about now, or um... uh, for for each design I have a code name, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. So if I'm making a catalog out of all these things, they do, they don't just start with the name itself. They also come. Uh, with this um, cipher almost. Oh right, you know? yeah, and that's what you actually see in yeah. the uh, in the decals as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like over here, you got like the HW3. And also, oh, I'm trying to recreate or create the the future I'm, I would like yeah. to see. So, and uh, it's a little bit autistic, isn't it? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, like, you got to have your own vision if, you, if you're going to design something. Uh, otherwise, you're just yeah. copying and, and diluting. And... Uh, my... my uh, my diploma work when I was studying history was actually uh, the name was actually Blitzkrieg. So in in my eyes the future isn't that right. bright. So it it can be seen a little bit of that uh, kind of language in the designs I do yeah. as well. So this is also why it's kind of heavy industrial uh, stuff. But I think at some point like I'll do like more like a lab kind of and more whitish environments yeah. interior designs so on. i'm also kind of preparing something on on, uh, on top of that um so it's it's not going to be everything kind of in these darker tones as it is now right so you actually have some designs in the pipeline that are going to have like kind of a brighter brighter tone uh, to them. yeah yeah i'm i'm really uh, uh also like in terms of interior design 
like I have like a lot of ideas uh, how things could actually be useful and should look like because um, so far everything's kind of kind of boxy which isn't that bad but or it's kind of too elegant or it's kind of too boxy for my for, yeah. for my taste you know I, I've seen a lot of in, in product designers industrial designers also actually looking up to the games these days uh, to come up with uh, new ide- ideas uh, for yes, sure yes it, it's kind of like cross contamination uh, between between the both worlds uh, because everything if you're doing um, so I'm more about discovering new standards, let's say, than some some beautiful. I know. I mean, if someone comes to you like I would like to have a beautiful book, you know what yeah. that means. Uh, so maybe we should actually start um, to talk about what should be the next yeah. standard of things, like in graphic designs, like uh, uh, grids, for example. You know, if you're doing um, desktop publishing and. Uh, designing a book like you, you um, yeah if you if you're really good at it you'll be following some grids to to be more yeah. systematic in presenting yeah. your work as well so and for your for your own work do you have like is it, it do you just work i would say subconsciously or do you actually have a, a conscious set of it's right, both yeah it's both because, as as I said, I'm kind of keeping the some sort of log of mm-hmm. things I'm doing, and I'm also like um, really keen to see other people uh, work and what they're doing. But uh, instead of like just taking it and copying, it, uh, like uh, I'm definitely going yeah. to study it and to see why something exists, and then I'll come with my own ideas um, how things can be right. better, you know. So there is one guy, I'm not really sure it's his name, uh, Richard Moore or something like that. Like uh, he's a script writer on uh, Watchmen. Or, mm-hmm. or like He said like we should definitely read the uh, uh, bad books just as the great books because the, the, the bad books uh, can be actually uh, even better, uh, I say, kickstart. Uh, because you'll see uh, that you can do something right. better uh, and then it'll be kickstart if you're reading a great book like you'll find the ideas uh, you'll be just taking that those great ideas without changing them because you already like them but if you see something bad you'll be coming up on top with your own ideas. yeah i guess that's true yeah so i completely agree with that statement yeah yeah it's it's a great statement and uh, i really like uh, how he was uh, like uh, portraying that uh, I mean, it can be an always uh, also an issue nowadays because everything everything kind of looks the same in terms of scripts, you know, the trailers, you know, the story arcs, you know, they're all pretty much uh, yeah. similar. Yeah. Um, and movies for me are always interesting subject because everyone is uh, talking about how much money this and that movie grossed mm-hmm. over the years. But I think uh, the, the, the value and purpose of the movie industry is uh, not money. I, I think they're actually projecting the reality they want to see. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's some sort of programming as well. So learning uh, and studying what they were doing also was helpful for me to get some better understanding of my own psychology and uh, our world surrounding me. Right. And s- s- with studying, you mean actually like broad like the broad subjects, not not just uh, study design, but just. I mean, it can be simple things. How they're emphasizing something, and someone is talking, like the camera is kind of uh, yeah. creeping in, and so on. You know, it can be it can be as little as this. You know, you don't need much, but uh, combining all these methods all together, you know, you can get um, a greater right. direction. So you can use all these techniques in. Uh, little snippets. I was actually doing animation uh, before way more, but now I'm kind of concentrating on the design side of things. But uh, because at first I was, I realized I need, I need content, you know, like if you want to have something great, like first of all, you need uh, great content. And I was thinking like, am I going to go with photography or going to do 
with uh, 3D, but uh, I have went I went for 3D because with 3D design I can produce the world I have envisioned, and with photography I'm probably going to just film which which is already yeah. existing around me. S- still, I'm I re- still uh, when I'm recreating some some forms and so on. Like I'm also trying to to kind of look at some industrial process manufacturing errors and so on to bring it into 3D. Because it's also funny, like photography uh, is kind of inclining to, to, to get the image as sharper, as clear yeah. as possible. But then in 3D, like uh, everything's perfect. And then we're adding uh, dust and yeah, fingerprints yeah. and so on, yeah. like to get some reality. And effect. using the lens correction. So this in is the another way. psychology kind of moment of the. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, why I kind of like product uh, design because when uh, someone is launching a product, they're kind of launching two series of images, like the first one, uh, clean industrial mm. renders, like taken out of the context, and the second series are the, the things which are already in use. Yeah. So you kind of get the both of the, 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 the two worlds, you know, no, nothing's better than the other, like you need both because um when, when you kind of try to to make the full circle when you get to the full circle then people will get the feeling that you have some sort of brand uh inside all right yeah that's that's interesting because like you 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 tend to present them in a very uh in a very photographic way almost as in i don't i don't know what it is but it's it's um they don't feel like renders and I and I and I don't think that's specifically because of the, the texture quality or so. Well, it's probably everything, uh, but I, I guess it's the approach of like how you how you present them and and how you work with the lens and everything that that I don't know. It, it almost makes them feel as though they're not renders for some reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, inter- interesting to hear that. Um, I mean, there, there are many things I could produce in in kind of more vivid colors. Uh, which is also an interesting point. On example, you, you will get a different effect if you are presenting a render on, on example, yeah. station or on Instagram because your that that medium uh, differs a little bit. On station, people will be most probably looking uh, st- uh, stuff on desktop. Yeah. So it means like uh, they will have uh, full blown up yeah. renders all over the screen. But on Instagram, like you'll be probably more likely publishing something which has to work as a thumbnail. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah, something vivid, something vivid on Instagram will work way better. You know, uh, I, I always knew that, but I still kind of didn't want to different too much from my kind of palette because I'm not the biggest fan of black and white mm-hmm. photography. But I like to have how to explain that. I like to to have kind of tones, so to speak. Um, so, like, if I'm lo- looking at something which is uh, kind of, let's say, black and white, um, I'll probably, I don't like too much of the contrast. I, I like to have all these yeah. kind of tones of the image. Uh, maybe to have something in black and white, but to have a feeling that I'm actually looking at a color. Yeah, so to yeah, speak, right. Uh, yeah, to have that kind of yeah. effect, you know. So I don't have a feeling that I'm missing something. Yeah. So this is all in my head, so to speak. But this is this is how I wanna kind of think about uh, things, and um, to produce that kind of deep, uh, like you have to introduce maybe some damage, some some dust, or some some yeah, fingerprints. Yeah. Some additional yeah. details, so so you have a feeling that you're not missing anything. You know, it's kind of grounded. So and are are you just just out of curiosity? Those imperfections, like fingerprints and everything, do you add those in in Keyshot or is that two uh, D? It's both. Sorry, oh, yeah, yeah, it's both yeah. post production and and shader. Yeah, so um, d- depends. Also depends how much I have time. So I have already some shaders yeah. and. Uh, if I find a good lighting, I'm trying to keep it. So uh, I would like to, 
produce more renders in that um, yeah. similar fashion at yeah. least you know or have a family of, of products uh, so they kind of uh, stick together and it, it will like if you're publishing later on this will be also like helpful so you don't have stuff all yeah. over the place yeah so it, it will show one vision so to so to speak actually you you can maybe in that way produce less and get more yeah if you have a system well, yeah in place. yeah you can just like kind of pick up uh your render setup and everything and 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 it's a win-win like you say because things and i mean you still need yeah. to experiment yeah. but yeah um mm. or you you're just observing some other people's success with the window and stuff to, to draw some uh, your yeah. own conclusions based on that yeah, yeah. but i, I definitely want to be different uh not not just for my own sake but also like to provide something else uh to everyone in in that way why in that way the, i don't want to incline too much to the existing ips right too much yeah you you can borrow some pieces here and there but like copying them doesn't make sense at all because a lot of these uh, ips which existing for a long time like for example star wars were cutting edge ip at yeah. the time it was produced but now it's retro. So it aged. It aged, yeah, that's know? true, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't mean it aged in a, in a bad way, but it's kind of uh, projecting a different uh, world now than it was at the time. Because at the time it, it felt that the uh, world was way ahead. Now it almost feels like it's uh, behind us. Because they were using the manufacturing uh, processes yeah, from the 80s. Yeah. You know, if you look at all these props, you know, all these props are based on the products from the eighties so seventies, yeah. even earlier, World War Two. Yeah, so, yeah. There, there is. Uh, if you study the weapon design. Oh yeah, they're all based on at some point like, those, those World War Two guns, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, and the uh, location scouting was the the same thing. You know, like uh, instead of like building the the whole studio for everything at the time, George Lucas didn't have that much money like uh, he was uh, doing great location yeah. scouting so like just finding a great architecture and solving yeah. it like that, that his movie like i'm more amazed by his first movie thx than uh star wars to be honest that was like a great rehearsal for star wars i, I don't think i've ever seen and that. that movie in a way um uh, yeah then and, and the after that name was used uh, for the, I believe, for the sound standard certificate oh, or right. something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's actually the name of the, of the first movie. Actually, you have two ones. You, like, you have his diploma work and you have, you have his um, uh, the feature movie. Oh, I got to check well. that out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I like both, you know, uh, especially the, the work he was doing with the camera. Video editing was uh, quite interesting as well, because um, while he was filming uh, over the day, the, the guy was uh, editing uh, uh, under the night and they were all meeting in the yeah. mornings yeah. to assemble it kind of all together or to assemble the, 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 the logic behind yeah. it, so to speak. There is a lot, a lot of experimental... I mean, the stuff he was doing at the time was like After Effects without After Effects, like uh, fast-paced editing, uh, experimenting camera artifacts, uh, perfect. Uh, I think he was influenced, um, like everyone at the time, uh, yeah. by Kubrick. So they were all looking. Uh, they all they also the the uh, Odyssey like uh, numerous times. Yeah. So yeah that's actually very interesting that you're you're bringing those up because uh those are those those aren't brought up all that much anymore especially like when you talk about kubrick's work uh for instance um a lot of a lot of like younger artists they're all i would say look looking at art station that's it uh, yeah. While well, there's actually yeah. so so much to learn from those those great iconic uh, film producers and and kind of kind of also tying it in it's, in, it's in 
in sort of like the spirit when they were released and everything like the the, the, the public zeitgeist of, of that era and everything and I, I think it's really interesting to to deepen yourself not just in the movies that you're talking about but also like when when they were released for instance and what the world looked like at, at, at that point and that that's all very interesting stuff to think about right Yeah, especially because uh, a lot of these uh, things were not standardized yeah. at all. So no one knew how it would look yeah. like. Um, this is now where we at with electric cars, you know, th because uh, I think it's important to know that I don't think designers are actually changing anything. We are just adopting yeah. technology, yeah. so to speak. Uh, we are actually also changed by the tech itself. And um, so it's kind of cool to... Look at fashion, on example, and the like saying this year you will wear this and this year yeah. will wear that, blah, blah. But majority of the inventions uh, were uh, based on technological uh, advancements. Uh, they didn't have any effect yeah. in that in way. I mean, even military had more influence on fashion than people uh, know because they had to, to produce uh, durable yeah. materials yeah. just because you know they need it and that's and that's it you know and then i mean you have this mass produced products in the open world like you have to be yeah, influenced by that yeah and like jeans do you, as well you when know? when you design stuff uh especially for your own for your own brand uh now that you say that do you, do you actually think about manufacturing Probably, as well like yeah. what what would be the manufacturing process and everything or i i do and i don't i mean in some way it's important some way it isn't uh, because it's not necessarily my job you know of course it's the best like, when you know a, a little bit about yeah, everything yeah. when you can take into account but uh, sometimes i ask like what's my what, what's my most important uh, um, duty so to speak like uh, to deliver yeah. in a, in a way is it a vision or is it manufacturing process yeah. you know like at the end Almost everything can be manufactured. It's just a matter of, of costs. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, and, that's uh, true. Yeah, and yeah. and pieces, and 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 uh, you know, I did some things in China and uh, some merchandise and so on. And they only ask you, you know, how many, yeah, yeah. and that's it, you know. <laughs> But um, so. I just I just think that that in a lot of ways, uh, thinking about the, the manufacturing process can help people solve solve problems instead of doing random stuff and design i agree yeah. i agree i mean you can get inspired by the back back end yeah. as, as well like uh i'll probably i'm i'm not on example i'm not that much looking at the luxury products because they are often over celebrated to justify the uh, to justify yeah. the price yeah. range in that way they're not often honest you know It's kind of nicely packaged lies, so to speak, <laughs> or you, you want to have a cheaply uh, served yeah. truth, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's so. The, the luxury segment is never going to produce a standard. Yeah. Like um, over weekends, sometimes I like to to watch like in uh, these uh, villas, like uh, like from fifty to hundred, yeah. even more, like a million dollars, like just to see what kind of level of design they're providing for that money. I mean, they're providing a lot of manual labor in, in uh, to justify that price, price range, also using the expensive yeah. materials. But it doesn't mean that the end product is looking better than something which is produced uh, in series. Yeah. So um, I'll be maybe more excite, excited, like, I mean, I don't care, like, who, whoever comes to me, I'll do my best. But uh, doing a product uh, which is kind of one of uh, one of kind or like in series, like they, they are both kind of, I say, um, they have both their own issues and, uh, and um, uh, I say, um, yeah. good things about yeah. them. Because... Um, uh, If something is kind of uh, done in million of, of uh, millions and millions of pieces, you know, you also can have a responsibility for the environment uh, as well. And 
I don't think designers are thinking that much about it. Okay, nowadays yeah. a little bit yeah, more, but so, still, yeah. you know, everyone likes to yeah. play. You know, you simply don't have that much time to to think about it, and uh, and most probably, I don't think you'll have a knowledge either, like to, because you have to be. To look a little bit more into the future, and you can't say uh, always how something will be successful, because based on that success, can also be reflected how much um, a product. Yeah, will be that's made true. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's so many factors, and yeah, I mean scientists like to play as well, just as yeah. designers do. They're just playing on genetical level, and uh, so maybe it's more under the microscope instead of like uh, and our shapes are more visible than theirs but i don't think there is a too much of difference i like to think on example uh, about design as something between uh, art and something uh, or and um, and science something yeah. in between yeah. Like the golden, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah that's also a, an interesting way to put it yeah and also, our brain has the left and right side, so design is probably somewhere yeah. in the middle, I guess. Yeah, that that's you that's have a to good be creative. To look at it. Uh, you have to be creative, and being creative doesn't mean like you're rational. Yeah. At all. Uh, because being rational is also like respecting your own experience, but if you have a bad experience, what then? You know. Then you're you're not really rational anymore because uh, everything you know is most of the, based on the yeah. bad experience. So yeah. yeah, maybe you can change that for the best, but a lot of people can't. Yeah, but would, you're still unable to not bring it to the table, anyways. Um, I, I think we we talked about this. I think it was with Ian Hubert in the first episode. Uh, that you you can actually like see if you if you go on our station for instance, the part of the world that people come from for instance very heavily influences the kind of work that they're doing, and for instance I would say people from Eastern Europe in general tend to produce very hard surface oriented very gritty and realistic and grounded designs for instance. Versus when you look at, uh, I would I would say uh, people from Asia, for instance, not not everyone obviously, but just in general, uh, and I think that that's also like the personal experience that you're thinking about, uh, that you were talking about just now. Um, people growing up, for instance, in Eastern Europe, like in the, in the 80s and in the 90s, it, w it was a difficult uh, a difficult area to grow up in, uh, lots of poverty and everything, and 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 just barely coming out of like the the soviet uh like the whole soviet thing and uh, and i think that's just something you cannot not bring it to the table when you start designing things you can bring in logic and everything and you can think designs through and think about manufacturing and everything but just that, like that personal spice almost that you throw into the designs you know and it can be a, a bad experience as well and i think that that you know like perhaps that's interesting in a way you know and also, like your work is also based on the yeah. tools itself. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Not just yeah. Yeah. your game. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and people do just what they can. Yeah. Often, yeah, because uh, and not so many know why they're doing something. They are not studying themselves, like and realizing why they're yeah. doing something. So I see a lot of. Uh, I say, I was always trying to understand the forms I was creating, like, uh, almost like to have reason behind them. Like, I'm not saying that I was always successful, uh, or I'm successful, mm. doesn't matter, but I'll definitely understand why I was doing something. There, there are some things I, I, I have created subconsciously, yeah. which were right, because they, they came from a different side of the brain. And some things were created from the rational part of the brain, which were also correct, you know. Um, I think if you're doing things subconsciously and if you're knowing uh, what you're doing mm. in that way, it's all, almost like meditation. And in that way, you're way faster. Like, you're not thinking when you're uh, driving a bicycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just going. 
you're just going and so you're in that zone like uh, everyone is talking about it it's it's a flow state you, you can talk about it in design you can talk about it in fighting yeah. for example like like people in ufc you know as soon as they are lost uh, and out of the zone they start yeah, losing you know yeah. so this is the problem with champs you know a lot of them retire as soon they uh, lose uh, one match after like 40 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. But you don't see that in tennis because in tennis it's fine if you're getting destroyed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Next yeah, day, you know. Yeah. It's okay, but in fighting game and uh, yeah, it's a little bit different, yeah. I guess. So I'm just mentioning that because of the psychology of that sport. Oh yeah, yeah. If that's a sport. If that's a it's sport, more psychology, so. psychological yeah. than you would expect it to be if you, if you think about it. Like you say. And they have also to be all around yeah. it, uh, nowadays. They have to know everything. Grapple and uh, boxing yeah. and so yeah. on. So. Almost like in design. Like you are drawing, you are modeling. Uh, you have to know a little bit of everything. Yeah. But at the end, is is uh, I think it's just about expressing the right idea. Like it uh, doesn't matter. Like uh, you can find someone like to to draw it uh, or to model it if you have the right idea. But you have to prove it. But to prove it, it's uh, the image uh, is one of the best ways to do it because image is like a thousand words. Yeah. So everyone can see immediately is that right on uh, on point yeah. or not. Yeah. So yeah, I think some sort of strategy kind of helps. Um, in that way and um, to to bring uh, up some um, interesting um, designs now now that you talk about uh, strategy something that i always wondered uh, about about your work and and the, the things you bring out um, like like i mentioned before there there's like this all almost like a laser sharp focus on the type of work that you're producing and like you say, it's a very conscious decision to 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 the kind of work that you're bringing out. But I I wonder, uh, for me personally, I have so many interests on just in the subject of design that I kind I kind of have to like really force myself to focus on one thing in order to make it, I would say like presentable and and let's say good. Uh, do you, do you experience mm -hmm. that as well, or like are you are you just like you know fuck the rest, or is it more of a do you have to battle that as well? Like the conscious decision to focus? I, I think everyone does. But some people less, some people more, yeah. that's for sure. But uh, I was actually more struggling with the with actual user interface of the software than anything else. Uh, because uh, there's so many things like when, when I work on something, I just, when, when something I don't like, I just yeah. want to change it. It's sometimes for me, it's really hard to use something I don't like. So, um, yeah, and then th this is the first battle already. Like, I'm not already, I'm not even producing yeah. anything. I, and I already want to change something. So, Blender is a, is a good uh, example how things were battling out. You know, what kind of user interface should be, like, should it, what should be the industry standard, what's yeah. the industry sta yeah. standard at all all these things you know and then it has to cater everyone you know it's like i think the blender is only communism in existence you know uh, so far but they still have a leader <laughs> so it's kind of funny you know like uh, and it kind of started as a commercial endeavor yeah. uh maybe even one of the first kickstarted uh, projects which was then the code was bought off by the yeah. community Thanks to Ron, uh, his uh, intentions uh, as yeah. well. So, uh, but yeah, back to the design process, uh, of course, I, I struggle. This is why I have some sort of system. So I have also like a mentorship, which I called like psychological operations, because this is exactly yeah. what it is. I don't look at design as a school anymore. Like, uh, is it problem solving? It's like... Uh, like military sector is way more bigger inspiration for me than any of the yeah. schools, you know, uh, now they're in existence, you know, like, and I, I don't know, like, uh, if, if the teacher is also boring, um, how, what yeah. he's teaching then? Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, all the good people are kind of working. All right. I mean, doesn't mean you have bad teachers. I'm not saying that, but I should I should say they should be really critical of the people who are also teaching you because if you're uh, it's not really good to adopt things which are actually yeah. bad. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was teaching uh, for for half a year as well and soon enough especially here in Croatia, I realized that the smartest people in class were the ones who had the problem with the authority. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Yeah. But but uh, it took me it like but we went through some sort of kind of break point uh, or I could go at very start against them because they were not respectful at the time because I didn't know them, they didn't know me. Or we could go along, yeah. so to speak. But uh, I, I didn't actually, I have chosen like not to to kind of go with authority or any of those things, but just share my passion for, for the work and design. And um, just because of that, they started to, to listen because they, they realized they have something, I have something uh, uh, to say. And, yeah. um, and I didn't do like any, I didn't give any homework at the time. Uh, it, it was, I'm talking a little bit about web design at that point. But I was surprised two weeks later when they started appearing, appearing with the work they were doing in their free time. So, all right. I didn't expect, yeah, I didn't yeah. expect that. So, that was my experience, like how I should like talk and approach people and, uh, and I also think the best time for for people to come up with uh, great ideas is actually end of the university or something like that. You're still young, to, to enough to have some energy levels, uh, high energy levels. But then you already uh, you have accumulated a little yeah. bit of experience, but uh, but you're still fresh to do some new things. You know, you're not uh, you're not sticking to the uh, to the box. You know, yet, you know, because everyone like through through our experience and uh, through like work environment teams and so on, like we, we learn to, I say, collaborate with others. But it doesn't mean that will always necessarily be the best solution for the end product, you know, because you're thinking more about your colleague than you're thinking yeah. about the end product. Yeah. And it, sometimes it's not your job to make someone happy. It's your job to mm, make uh, the the product if that if this is the goal. So, but I have noticed in the interviews from the companies, they they want someone nice. They don't want uh, a great designer, you know. So maybe it's the best to be both. Yeah. Uh, because with with the nice people, it's also easy yeah. to work. But uh, yeah, like you're not always there to make friends. No, I, I guess it's a it's a balance, right? I, I, I mean, I've I've crossed paths with some some absolute asses, which you know it's it's not worth it to to work with those people, even if they're great designers. It's it's just like they drain you so much. But on the other side, if you just have like yeah, some people are compatible, some yeah. are not. Yeah, most definitely yeah but uh but then it's interesting also to see that people you couldn't maybe work with they're like working great with someone yeah that's else. true that's true it's never so, like it's never black and white right it's uh it's just the match that doesn't work yeah that that specific match i mean uh i mean i have to self-correct myself all the time you know but this is also what makes me uh better so in that way i don't mind that process at all i only mind when I have to do something which I don't see yeah. a purpose yeah. uh, in it, you know. Uh, this is this is the only thing. And uh, if someone, yeah, uh, if something doesn't work out, um, this is why, for like, example, I like people who are kind of direct and honest because uh, a simple no yeah. is also great yeah. because uh, they're saving you time. That is true, so, yeah. Instead of like uh, hijacking... Uh, um, your, your time and uh, because then you're thinking like what you can do I, it happened a couple of times that uh, I was actually delivering way more than um, I was supposed not not in a way that I yeah. shouldn't provide 
like the client wasn't using that work. They didn't need it simple as yeah. that. So that, that was also an interesting experience, you know. And, um, and some, yeah, sometimes you, you just to have, you have to solve some problem and they can, um, you know, like uh, continue on their own. Like uh, this, this is also quite successful uh, um, solution as well. Uh, th this is what I'm also trying to do. I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm trying to fix maybe f and produce things as soon as possible, and if the client client wants, they can go. You know, yeah. their own way. You know, if the pro if this is their only problem. You know, I don't wanna keep them around just because I can extract some additional resources or so on. Because for me, like having a uh, different projects is also like um, important uh, so I can grow myself as well. You mean different, uh, just not working on one project at a time, not like a full time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Do... You, because if you get stuck, like you, you easily to, to get stuck in one yeah. mindset. So this is why for me, switching for different clients industries uh, was definitely yeah. useful. Yeah. An example, uh, uh, in the car industry, when, when you have this kind of PR agencies moving in, advertising cars, you know, like you can clearly see that they don't have an understanding of the car yeah. industry. Yeah. Uh, so, and also like these target groups, so on, you know, who is going to buy it, what. Yeah, a lot of these uh, projects is just based on statistics, which are not based in reality at all. You know, they, I mean, they did that work, they, but then at the end, you, you simply, simply, you don't see yeah, the result. Yeah, yeah. On example, on, on example, like if the car brand is new, they'll probably go with the tech in their advertising. But if they're existing for some longer time, they will go for this kind of more traditional Rolls Royce approach. So this is, this is, um, yeah, it's just a tip, you know. But no one is talking about it. So I, I think this is why Lexus, for example, is uh, always going with tech, you know, speeds, uh, infotainment yeah, systems yeah. and so on. And I never saw Rolls Royce like advertising that part of the car. You know, it's something in addition. It's not the main ingredient doesn't need it it's it's not needed yeah yeah so. and, I, and i guess like when when you're talking about rolls royce in specific or i would say other luxury brands it's not it's not about like the literal tech or like the literal uh i would say options you have on the car it's it's like the rolls what it represents more than anything else i guess like when you buy a bmw or or like a, like a fancy one or when you buy i don't know uh any fancy car really it's about what that car represents right it's not it's not about the specifics yeah i agree but to understand the shapes of these older cars is also um, important to have understanding that the cars became to be from the carriage itself and you had horses so you can also oh, see yeah. still to this day yeah. some of these shapes that's true yeah, yeah. like more oval fluid uh, and so on because this fluidity is uh from my point of view, um, they, they started to enclose the, sh the, 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 the whole thing, you know. Uh, and uh, because when, when tech arrives, or one example, when Honda was doing a SEMA robot or something like that, that whole thing as a prototype was completely open. Or the virus was sticking on every corner, you know. But as, as soon the product is progressing, everything is becoming more yeah. and more enclosed. The same was happening with the car itself. So, but to, to understand that, you have to remove yourself from the... Um, you have to move away, look at yeah. the history, where some things were done and how yeah. they were progressing. Because you, if you're into one of the brands, like you're not going to go that much into the history or in the future. Because a lot of these brands nowadays have an issue. What's, what's going to be next step for them? to take um an example like also like of the watch industry 
like what killed, uh, uh, I mean, didn't kill, but redefined the, the watch industry at the time. Because the watch was a yeah. luxury product, if you had it in your hand. So, and you were succeeding one from your father or grandfather, whatever. But as, as soon the quartz uh, was invented, like they became extremely cheap and everyone could have that tech on the, on the hand for, for yeah. no money. So the whole thing was uh, upside down, you know, and a lot of these brands uh, went out of the business. But the same can happen once again, because now you have G-Shock, and, I mean, Casio, and but they're not that smart as uh, yeah, iWatch, yeah, yeah, example. Yeah. And they're doing, why I'm, uh, why I'm using them as, as example, because they're producing all this variety of different products. They have, uh, I mean, thousands of different models. Yeah, models. that's true, yeah. So, Lots of variations on so the same design. Even if, if you didn't have any other brand, they are actually, to themselves, they are like, uh, I don't know, like uh, having maybe too much, you know. But they don't have many uh, smartwatches uh, comparable uh, to no, the Apple no. itself. So, and Apple never did a phone before and they did it, but it was never about the phone because it was about the uh, human interaction with the product itself for the touch. Yeah, interface. yeah. I've, I've uh, read the... Phone was just a platform yeah. so so to speak you if you, know? but it's actually personal computer pda device yeah 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 that's true that's also what killed like the pda industry as well isn't it yeah because i remember those ads like yeah. for the palm yeah, because... computers and everything like that that was like a really fancy thing to own back in the days right yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly i was uh, really yeah, that, that was all, always like uh, big for me at the time as well. But uh, uh, but yeah, are they really making us kind of smarter or anything like that, you know? But the, the, with, with, uh, with iPhone was like, it was more about you need it, so to speak, to, to, uh, to function. Uh, because you could live without PDA, but without the phone, it's yeah. a little bit different. But then you're getting PDA inside as well. But I think the, the thing they solved was this interaction. Uh, without a yeah. keyboard, like to have a keyboard for the touch interface. So that, that was the thing, you know, because they were not the first one, but they were the first one to understand, or Steve, I know, he had this kind of understanding, problem solving um, mind, um, even though he wasn't engineering anything. No, no. He was just connecting dots. And, and uh, for me, it was also interesting how the, the, the problems like Apple had on the managing level, uh, like uh, how he had to change some things, how this company was thinking, working uh, to connect all yeah. these engineers uh, with designers and uh, all together. So, yeah, that, that wasn't typical, but that, that was more like uh, thinking of the smaller company, uh, not, not the yeah. corporation. This is not how corporation is working. So, yeah. I felt... But this is now one. Yeah, so. I, I've read that uh, that, auto, that 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 bi biography of Steve Jobs, uh, and he did he did a like a very, I would say, <laughs> dare I say it, almost like a crazy approach to how how he wanted, for instance, the iPhone to develop, and there were lots of things that were considered to be impossible at that time. But he basically, he basically said, like, yeah, no, we're going to do it. And then the people were like, but Steve, that's not really possible. And he was like, yeah, do it. Do it anyways. And he, he just pushed. Uh, it, it, it became possible. It became possible when uh, they were starting doing in millions of pieces. But it, it felt impossible because they had to come up with uh, some manufacturing yeah, process that's it. Yeah. to produce it in this quantity. But you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it like 100 yeah. pieces, like to develop all this tech software and just yeah. to have 100. Yeah. Like uh, this is completely different mindset. So in that way, it wouldn't work. So you, you could do it or you couldn't, you know, uh, you have to break uh, through, through numbers 
to to make it to make it possible. But uh, for me, uh, he was interesting uh, because the way he he was uh, like coming up with the ideas, you know. Like I don't think his ideas were the most rational ones, you know. But they became reality, and that way he he is like uh, uh, realistic, yeah. you know. But we all know that the first uh, present keynote, like when I mean, they were presenting the phone, the, it was basically a PowerPoint presentation. If he deviate from the um, this kind of slides, you know, he had in phone, like he was doing something else, like the whole f- thing will uh, kind of bug out. Yeah. So yeah, and then they make they made it like uh, real, and it was working. So, so yeah. If 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 there is the right uh, thinking behind, we'll we'll find a way to do it uh, for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that's crazy though, if you think about it. I mean, like NASA, you know, like. You've, you. Uh, what they're doing yeah. is crazy. But also the sp- the the whole thing that SpaceX sort of sort of debunked, you know, like the whole yeah, we can't reuse the the rockets. We just can't. We tried. We can't. And then, you know, the the way Elon Musk usually works is like he goes, uh, he tries it anyways until until it kind of works. Yeah, just like just like the tech uh, which uh, which we used for, to go to the moon, we, it doesn't exist yet according to NASA. So we can't go back. <laughs> <anymore>. <laughs> And all this footage is lost, and uh, yeah. Are are you kind of um, leaning the conversation into a fake moon landing? Uh... No, I'm yeah, just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for for me, NASA is. Uh, uh, I I don't think we have to go uh, no, there at no. all. I think NASA is the biggest uh, PR agency in the world, to be honest, because it's it's not about is this was this did it happen or not. It's about how much money I get. Yeah. From it. Yeah. There's so much connected to it. It's, so to get all that money for not yeah. going anywhere, it's amazing. Doesn't mean doesn't matter were they there or not, you know. So because this this is a uh, loving, you know. Because like NFTs, you know, are they real or not? You know, what's the? the is, uh, I'm talking about perception of value here, you know. So in that way, they are kind of interesting yeah. example. Like, what's what's uh, what's the product the NASA is producing? Yeah, that's a good question. How they're justifying? How they're justifying that uh, enormous budget? So, this this is what I was talking before about Hollywood, like projecting their own yeah. version of reality. Yeah. So. So in, in that way, you can make a full circle and see how things work. I, I, I got to say, like, uh, I am very undereducated on the whole subject of, of what NASA is actually doing. Uh, but that actually sounds like a very interesting conversation to have in itself. Uh, I would say, like, in the next in the next talk or something that 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 that's really like uh, how uh, science design and funding basically come together in, into like this massive corporation and yeah i think i think there's actually a rule to it you know as, as things are becoming crazier and crazier the money incre- involved yeah. increases like if you look at the music industry and then you have the movie industry and the gaming yeah. took over you know as things becoming more and more virtual non-existent uh, the, yeah, or digital, yeah. whatever. In that way, it happened, but it doesn't have to be real. Uh, but then uh, the the money gross is uh, yeah. way bigger yeah. as well, which is crazy. Like, uh, and people always ask you, okay, this is a nice design, but what you're actually producing? You know, they don't know, but you know, it's still getting paid. Yeah. You know, so I mean, you are because the the the. The digital product is the the product of the future. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. that that reality be, will become more important than the the actual one. It's actually one of the goals. So, I mean, th- this is transhumanism. Yeah, now we're yeah, talking singularity about. at its at its you know at its start basically, like where where te- 
human and and machine are basically merging now, right? And now we have also the, the thing like uh, you you're using AI to generate some film yeah. designs and stuff or yeah. artworks and and then you have a uh, problem with like uh, who who is author of what you know like uh, uh, should AI be granted the the rights or the human being you know or are you designer or just operator yeah. or whatever yeah so yeah that's like a fun that that's again like that could be a whole design like a whole conversation topic as well like the 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 merging with ai for for designers is is i think a lot of people including me are are scared about the whole well not scared to death but just like it's very eerie yeah, yeah. with the reason i mean uh, the if you give the ai the power of um, administrative powers like if they become powerful uh, like they can invoke like things like uh, what the government yeah. right now does they just have to operate some of the things and they they become it you know everyone has to listen to it so there is no out. No. so no. one of the one of the definition of this kind of new b system is actually exactly the ai itself so just like yeah. singularity theory is also mentioning as well that is crazy <laughs> that is i know i know it's becoming a reality but it it you know it's it's kind of basically it's it's what all of those movies warned us about and and i don't know it's it's happening right in front of our noses Next right now basics, yeah. and we're all so accepting of it you know it's 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 like the the AI is already here. It's already in our phones, and it's already analyzing stuff that we're doing, and and to to better our experience in 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 some way, I guess it's doing that. But but still, it's it's kind of scary how it's seeping into our everyday lives, and it's here. Like the AI is already here, and yeah. Ho hopefully, yeah. for the best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then especially if you hear, but but I guess it's also like his tactic. I mean, like Elon Musk warns the world about the, the about AI, you know, and and that's scary, you know, to hear like a high profile person basically warn the entire engineering industry to to do not go there. But you you know we're going there. It's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, there the are also interesting things like uh, subject. To, this is the best subject to explore in the movies, uh, for sure. But somehow you want to have this content, you know, for in the, uh, for the entertainment. And when the everything, you, when you are done with it, like you can go yeah. on your own way. But uh, I mean, movies are also linear, linear medium. So it means like nothing's going to change from the start uh, yeah. to the end. And with games, like everything's changing, everything's kind of interactive. Yeah. Like you, in the movie, you are directing your own movie, so to speak, playing the game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then with uh, with, with uh, virtual reality, AI, and all these things, it's it's becoming yeah. life. Yeah, it's it's only gonna be a matter of time before you 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 play a game and and like the actual the NPCs get to know you, like they're they actually like befriend you and learn. <laughs> The kind of choices you make, and it, it, it will be a matter of time before they go like <laughs> typical Ivan, you know, like you're playing, and and they know, they already know what you're gonna do, right? Just because they analyze your yeah. behavioral. If NPC is smart, and then you, and then the whole game is really yeah. smart, you know, they usually not yeah. that smart. But we're going there, you know. It's gonna. Be, I don't know how many years is it gonna be like a matter of five or twenty years, but we're going there, like we're we're. A game will be this this fully autonomous, intelligent virtual reality. I don't mean necessarily with the goggles, but I mean just like a a reality that you can escape to. And it's kind of funny that you know this is more like things we are now talking about. It's kind of engineering and science yeah. in its uh, in its own. But it's kind of funny, like scientists unable to predict what's coming up. Yeah. You know. You know, nowadays, like conspiracy theorists have a way better luck. 
of predicting the future than the people who are kind of uh, specialized in that. Yeah, but there's there's also this. Um, I think it has a name, uh, but basically that people can only uh, envision the future based on on like the actual existing technology. Uh, so if you look at at like those futuristic images that people painted back in the 30s, like there were there were big blimps and and I mean it's it's it like looked future. futuristic but it still looked as though it was part of that time. The future which yeah. never happened. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the same. Like well, we can never predict what's coming. I mean, to to the degree this even uh, made the way to the motor industry. Like if you look at some concepts from general motors when they had jet engines on the oh, cars itself. oh yeah 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 like the space yeah. age uh i didn't mind that at all uh, for me that was quite quite interesting even though i knew that's isn't yeah. realistic but you know i really liked the idea to have an actual concept yeah you know uh, at least in for for the time being you know so yeah definitely yeah. interesting definitely interesting yeah but I think to come up with some good ideas, you also have to play. So this is all necessary in, in a way, even though maybe it looks crazy, like in a, in a way it, it felt necessary. Um, maybe through that you could not come up with yeah. some new tech, but maybe you could come up with some yeah. new design language, For instance, new DNA. Yeah. Because with car... Uh, with electric cars, uh, the, I'm not looking at them as a as a automotive. Uh, I say automotive company. I'm looking at them as a, a technology yeah. uh, companies. You know, they're, they're completely different uh, mindset. It's uh, now now they have to take care and think about AI, not just yeah, about the engine. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And then if you look at the Terminator. The design is based on an internal combustion engine yeah. DNA. Yeah, absolutely. And you can feel that. Like, it's it's a walking engine, basically. Yeah. Exa exactly. But this is not the no. future. It's not enough pro uh, prosthetics uh, design in that design. So, But it's walking this emotion because at that time, the cars were yeah. the pinnacle, maybe, of the mass-produced products. So in that way, the these kind of robots look the... Uh, as a as a future yeah, reality yeah of it's kind of like it's kind of like the same the same thing like it it's futuristic but it's still contained within the the i would say the restrictions of of that time period uh, yeah and then the new ones are going more with the concept of the bio machine like but they still uh, because of the ip they can't break away from yeah, the yeah, heritage yeah, yeah. and i mean yeah. i don't mind that i don't mind that at all the only thing I will kind of mind in, in this movie is kind of lack of reality. Like if you have this kind of uh, kind of uh, designs, like you you have to somehow ground yeah. them in reality. Yeah. This is an example of what I'm trying to do with my own. Like as crazy as I go, like I would like to have them uh, be uh, seen as they can already exist. Yeah. Simple as that. So in that way, it will work. And if if you find them real, then uh, your emotional response will be even greater. So yeah. You can get, get the yeah, 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 and that's currency, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is crazy. Like uh, well, 10 years ago, if someone was talking about it, that you'll be, um, that will be the, the, the currency today in, in, in a way like... Um, now people are getting uh, clients yeah. from Instagram. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Before, before that was um, yeah. unthinkable. Uh, uh, so, um, I think we, uh, I think we, we need to wrap up right now because I got like uh, got about yeah, two I hours think we produced, uh, uh, for you. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that I still want to bring up with you. So, so why not? If, if it's all right with you, we can bring you back in, uh, in one of the future episodes. Uh, uh, sure, sure. Because you you appear to me to be like this giant machine of 
design knowledge walking around called Ivan Santik. And yeah, I would I would love to further pick your brain on on quite some subjects. So uh no, this 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 has been great, man. Um I'm really happy that I finally got to get some insight from you because I've been following you along on, on our station and Instagram for quite some time. Yeah, well I was never aware of that. Yeah, this is maybe a a problem almost you know like uh, some people are following for a long time and you are not even aware of that yeah yeah it's it's it it, it does appear that way especially when you, when your work is is that consistent it's very hard to envision like there's there's an actual human behind it creating the creating it and 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 building it and everything so and, and a lot of designers i i have realized they are really uh having issues like um, no nowadays everyone's talking about the mental yeah. health you know yeah. the struggle and everything but if they saw uh, how much they actually support they're getting not just for likes uh, they'll be going forward like yeah. uh, like nothing you yeah know? that's true yeah because at the end you are working in your own studio with your own team or yeah. you're alone or whatever so you're, you're lacking that uh, yeah. insight if you cannot some uh, i say influencer or whatever but then yeah then a completely different play yeah. field. uh thank you for inviting oh. me uh, for sure i was glad i could uh, talk about uh, the subjects uh, man thank you for uh, coming on i mean it's yeah. uh yeah this is this is really really cool my pleasure